Okay, let's do some elasticity questions now. The main question about elasticity or the main type of questions that you should be mindful of are these type of questions that that relate elasticity to total revenue. There's some questions about you know the, the equation for elasticity, but those are pretty easy. These are the most interesting ones. And this one actually, um, the answer is D because we can't really tell what happens to total revenue if the government increases the price of uh, marijuana by reducing the supply because we don't know what the elasticity is. In other words, when the price goes up, two things could happen. The, the quantity reduction in marijuana is actually a lot, and a lot more than the price. So therefore, the total revenue that producers make in total, the aggregate, will go down because you have, yes, they're making more money on each gram of marijuana they sell, but they're selling a lot less marijuana, so their revenue goes down. But if the revenue doesn't, if the consumption doesn't change very much, meaning an, an elastic demand, then the revenue will go up because they will sell just about the same quantity of marijuana, but they will sell it at a higher price, making more revenue. So unless we know what, what is the elasticity, we can't really tell what happens to total revenue when the price changes. Uh, on this one here, this one here, all you have to do is apply the formula. We know that the elasticity of marijuana is minus 0.5. So what's going to happen when the price increase of 20%? Well, we know that the quantity will go down, but the question is how much will go down. If it's, um, if it's inelastic, it will go down by less than 20%. If it's elastic, it will go down by more than 20%. Now, we know it's minus 0.5, it's, it's, it's inelastic, so which one of this is going to be? Well, here's how you answer. This is the, the equation for elasticity, the percentage change in quantity or the percentage change in price. This is the definition of elasticity, in fact. Uh, we know the values of two of, two of the terms in this equation. We know the elasticity of marijuana, which is minus 0.5, and we know the percentage change in price that we're interested in is 0.20%. Increase, so it's positive. We know that the quantity will go down, so the number will have its negative. All we have to do is to solve for the percentage change in Q of X, and that's by multiplying 20% times 0.5, and that gives you the answer, which is minus 10%. So this is an inelastic demand because when the price goes up by 20%, demand goes down by less than 20%, in this case, 10%. Now, in this one, it's the same, same type of question, but now we have all the information we need to answer. In this particular one, we know that the demand for the, the price elasticity of demand is elastic, so if you want to increase your revenue, what should you do? Well, if it's elastic, it means that if you increase your price by, let's say, 10%, your demand will go down by 20%, and you actually will lose revenue. So if you want to increase your revenue, you actually have to lower the price. Because when you lower the price, your quantity, the, in the increase in sales that you get are going to be more, percentage-wise, than your reduction in price. So if you want to increase your revenue, you should reduce the price. I think I have a, um, a little visual here for you to see that. So total revenue is nothing else than price times quantity. So when the price goes down, the quantity will respond by going up. If the, price, if the quantity goes up by more than the price, meaning that it's an elastic demand, a reduction in price increases total revenue because the, you know, the quantity effect, which is positive, is going to be more than the price effect in this case, which is negative, so your total revenue will go up. And this is an elastic demand because the quantity arrow is larger than the price arrow, which is what happens in this particular problem and the one we did before. When you reduce, reduce your price, you gain a lot of sales, and your revenue goes up. Here's another question, same thing. Uh, March elasticity is, um, if we, this one is kind of asking you the same thing in a different way. Uh, you know that for, um, for March, uh, she increased the revenue when she raises the price, so that means that the elasticity has to be inelastic because that means that when she increases the price, she doesn't lose a lot of sales. So that's why her revenue goes up when she increases the price. So we know that for March, the demand is price inelastic, on the other hand, Brad uh, increases revenue when he lowers the price because he gains a lot of customers. That's the only way he could have actually increased revenue by lowering the price. And that's because he has a price elastic demand. So uh, the answer to this question is that um, for March is inelastic, for Brad is elastic, so that would be answer B. 
Now, another type of question that you have to do elasticity is how to do, um, basically determine how elastic a good is. And there's two things that, in essence, determine how elastic or inelastic a good is going to be. One is how expensive it is, and the second one, which is more important, is how many substitutes you have. And the more substitutes a good have, the more elastic it demand because the more options consumers have to change a cons their, their behavior or their consumption when they increase in the price. So in order to find out what is the most inelastic of these goods, you simply have to figure out which one is the one with the least amount of substitutes. And clearly salt is that one. There's a lot of substitutes for women's blouses from Walmart. I mean, one example could be women's blouses from Kmart. There's a lot of substitutes from potato chips, pretty much any type of chips you can replace for potato chips. I mean, they're, they're not exactly the same, but they're a substitute. And Tylenol also has a lot of substitutes because you can use Advil, Aleve, and any other other pain relievers out there. But salt is salt. There's a lot of there's a really few things out there that will replace what you get from salt. So the, well, this one, the most inelastic, is salt. Now there's uh, two more type of elasticities. It's the cross price elasticity and the income elasticity that you should know for the exam. They're not very di uh, difficult. It's basically the same formula but apply it differently. In this case, we know the cross price elasticity between hot dogs and mustard is minus two. Uh, and that tells you, by the way, that these two things are complements because when the price of one goes up, the demand for the other one goes down. So it's the cross price is, is negative. So if, um, if a 20% increase in the price of hot dogs, what happened to the quantity of mustard? Well, we know it's going to go down because the cross price elasticity is negative. But how, by how much it will go down? All you have to do is to apply the formula. This is a formula for cross price elasticity. If you look at it, it's really, basically the same as a elasticity formula. It's just that we're changing the P of X for P of Y. So the percentage change in quantity of X, what is it? Hot dogs. Um, over the percentage change in the, in the price of Y uh, mustard. We know two things on this equation, the elasticity and the change in price. We're just going to multiply the two to change the percentage change in quantity. The percentage change in quantity is 40%. So the answer to the question before was uh, a change, a reduction in quantity of 40%. Income elasticity is essentially the same thing. What we're going to do is to see how much the demand responds to a change in income. Again, there's two possibilities. It's a normal good. Income goes up. You consume more. Income goes down. You consume less. But it could be an inferior good, like public transportation or Roman noodles. When the income goes up, you consume less. When your income goes down, you consume more. In this particular case, we know that this is, uh, what is it? Uh, he buys five packages when he's in college, and he buys six packages after he gets out of college. So this is a normal good. So the elasticity of the demand is going to be positive, And this is a normal good. Now, uh, remember that the elasticity of income is the same thing as uh, any elasticity. Again, we're just going to change the numerator at the denominator in the equation. So now we're trying to see how the percentage change in quantity of mac and cheese responds to a percentage change in income. OK, so um, we just have the exam review, the question from the exam review to go over. We'll do that one in the last video.